Lord, we thank you for watching over us all night long as we sleep. And God, we thank you, oh God, for allowing us to be in our right minds. We thank you for keeping us in your care. We thank you for shielding and protecting us from all hurt, harm, and danger. And Lord, we come right now in the name of Jesus, asking you to forgive us, oh God, for all of our sins, oh God. Oh God, that you will wash us and cleanse us in your blood. In the name of Jesus, creating us, oh God, a clean heart. Renew us. Renew us, oh God, in your spirit. Renew us in your strength. Lord, we need you, oh God, to, get, to touch us, oh God, in a, a great and mighty way like only you can. We need you to move by your spirit, oh God, and move by your power. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we need you to send down your anointing, oh God, that it may rest rule and abide in us. In the name of Jesus. Lord, lead us and guide us and give us what to do and how to do it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you to touch on today. Oh, God, we ask you to use us for your glory, oh, God, as you would have your way, oh, God, in this service on today. That you would use us to be a blessing to those that are listening, oh, God. Oh, God, that you would encourage somebody's heart, oh, God, that you would lift somebody's spirit. In the name of Jesus, Lord, even through singing, oh, God, through praise and worship, oh, God, as we praise and worship you. Oh, God, you said they didn't worship you. You must worship you in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus, and Lord, we come right now. In some ways, we know how, oh, God, to lift you up and to magnify your holy name. Because you alone are worthy, and there is nobody like you. And, God, we just thank you for all you've done. We thank you for what you're doing right now. And we thank you for what you're going to do. And we ask you to move, oh, God. And we ask you to do it, oh, God, according to your will. Jerusalem Temple's virtual service. We are so glad that you have taken our time to join us today. And we are so very grateful that God has blessed us to see this very new year of 2021. As we all know, last year of 2020 was a very challenging and difficult one for us all. But because of God's grace, he has kept us and allowed us to be here today. And so therefore we ask that you would just simply help us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ by simply liking our page, sharing our videos, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Also, if you would like to be a blessing to this ministry, you may do so by one of the ways that are displayed across the screen. You may do that now, or you can just simply wait until after you have enjoyed the service. To be a blessing. However you choose, we are just thankful that you have joined us and we pray that God continue to be a blessing upon each and every one of you. Thank you so much.
Lord God, we thank you, oh God. We thank you this evening. Thank you for all of your blessings. Thank you for your hand of deliverance. We thank you for your touch, my Savior. Look on today and bless, oh God. Bless your people, everyone. In the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you for your goodness and for your tender mercy. We thank you for the things that you've done, oh God. For you God and your God all along. We praise you, O oh God, and we thank you this morning. Thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you, Lord Jesus. O oh God, lead and guide us and direct our path, Lord Jesus. And we will forever give your name to praise. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for you. We're viewing this telecast on today. We are praying that God will ever bless and strengthen you and keep you in his care. And those that are not saved, we pray that God will touch your heart and make known his way and that you will receive Christ Jesus as Savior and Lord. Praise the Lord. Certainly this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to the word of the Lord. In the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verses 28 and 30. The Lord of the Lord breathed. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Verse 30, because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained. Whereof he has given assurance unto all men, in that he has raised him from the dead. I want to just ruse for a subject a few minutes. God's appointments. God's appointments. Certainly that's a plural term. Not just talking about one appointment. Uh, and if word said, because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, wherefore or whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. God's appointments. You know, there are many people who just don't believe that things are going to happen as they have been said and even prophesied in the word of God. And today we find that we have many appointments in life, but none are as important as the one that God has for us. No, in, no appointment is more important as the one that God has for us. Now here in this life, we can, we can and we do, you find individuals that do break many earthly appointments, many, many, you name them, and we can break them and sometimes do break them, earthly appointment. But God's appointment must be met. His appointments must be met. And this sermon today, it deals with four of them. And if we can accept and will accept the first two appointments, 
We need not worry about the other two. But if we do not accept the first two, it will be a terrible thing to meet God in the last appointment. Looking at these appointments that God has appointed, we stated that there are four. These are just four of the appointments that God makes. He has appointed us to obtain salvation. That's an appointment. When we look at 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, and verse 9, it states that God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. He has appointed, or he has arranged, or he has made a way for us to obtain salvation. In Titus 2 and 11, it says, For the grace of God has appeared, and it bringeth salvation. It has appeared to all men. Then John 3, 17 tells us, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. When we look at the book of Matthews 1, 21, 1 and 21, it states, And she shall bring forth the Son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. John 1 and 29, it says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. When we take a look at Romans the 10th chapter and verse 13, the word of God says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's not just saying that you hear his name and know what they call him and you just call that name, but you've got to first of all repent of sin, come to him, have that within your heart. I want to be with the Lord. I want God to save me. And you call upon that name. And the Lord said, you shall be saved. In the book of Luke, the 19th chapter, and verse 9, Jesus said unto him, This day salvation is coming to your house, coming to your home. This day. You know, uh, Zacchaeus, he was there when Jesus was passing through the place. And because of he was of little stature, low of stature, he ran ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree. The crowd was so large and pressing. And because of that height, he wanted, he didn't want to miss the opportunity of seeing Jesus. He had heard about this Jesus, the Son of God. He wanted to see him, but I feel that he wanted more than just to see him. And so when Jesus came, Jesus realized and knew what this man wanted. So as he passed by or passing by the crowds and the crowds following him, he stopped at the sycamore tree and looked up and saw Zacchaeus. He therefore knew his name, said, Zacchaeus, come down. Come down because I, I'm going home with you. I'm going home with you. And therefore, praise the Lord that he went home with Zacchaeus. Not only that, praise the Lord, but when we look uh, and we see that uh, uh, there we can do nothing without the Lord God. We can do nothing. And Paul talked to the people at Athens. When he went to Athens, he began to talk with them. Uh, for he saw when he went there, and he was making uh, 
comments and said, for, for in him we live and we move and we have our beings as certain also of your own prophet said, for we have, for we are, that is, his offsprings. Now in Athens, the people there were worshiping idol gods. And one of the gods, the god Diana. And there were others that they were worshiping. And therefore, Paul was talking to the people there about uh, even one of your own poets have said that for we are also his offspring. He said, for as much then as we are the offsprings of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stones, graven image art or man's devices. One of your own poets have said, we are God's offspring. And if we are God's offspring, certainly the Godhead is not made of gold, silver, or stone, or anything else. And the Bible said that the Lord said that at the time of this ignorance that God winked at, but now he commanded man, men everywhere to repent. So there are no excuses today. Praise the Lord. In the early times, God winked at men that had looked at women looking at false gods. But now, it's different now. That dispensation has passed. But God require every man, every woman to come from everywhere you are and repent. The Bible said because he has appointed a day. And that day is hid in the midst of days. He has appointed a day which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has already ordained by the man Jesus Christ. Therefore Paul told the people in Athens, one of your own poets have said that we are God's offsprings. And he cannot be like the idols that you have set up in Athens. God tolerated idolatry which disgraced the world. But now He's going to, and he has given a complete revelation demanding that men everywhere will stop and repent. Tear down, throw away, get rid of idols or whatever idol one may have and repent. And the second appointment that God has made, he has appointed us a kingdom. He has appointed us a kingdom Luke said in the 22nd chapter and 29th verse, Jesus said it is, through the apostle there, I appoint unto you a kingdom, and mine as my Father appointed unto me, I appoint to you a kingdom. Now we, Jesus had told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And we are born into the kingdom. We are born into the kingdom. And then born into the kingdom that make us heirs of the kingdom to come. And we are, praise the Lord, heirs of that kingdom. Matthew 5 and 5 said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And in Revelation 5 and 10, this tells us of the day when we will be kings and priests and will reign on the earth. You know, some people feel that we're going to reign up above. In other words, we're going to where we say heaven is somewhere. But on this earth, we will reign as priests and shall reign with him a thousand years. 
there in the word of God, this and that will be our day. He would reign with him for a thousand years. And in that day, there will be upon the bells of the horses. There will be bells that is upon the horses. And these bells will have holiness unto the Lord. Zacharias 14 and 20 said all of the pots, the pains in Jerusalem will have holiness unto the Lord. And so those that will be in the millennial reign, everywhere they turn, they will see holiness. They will even see it written and being upon the bells of the horses when they travel through, people will see and know, praise the Lord, that holiness unto the Lord. The Bible let us know that the righteous shall reign and we will put down evil and all corruption. The righteous shall reign in that day. And then, after the millennium period is over, let us know that the eternal kingdom will come. The eternal kingdom will come. If you go back, praise the Lord, in this time that we're living in, when we look at the things that are going to happen in this world, first of all, when the rapture takes place, Every righteous person is going in the rapture. And after the rapture, after the Lord take his people back to glory, then we will find, whether it be immediately after the rapture or a little later, we will find the last seven years, the last seven years taking place where God will pour out his wrath upon men and women. But God has not appointed us to this wrath. The third appointment that God has is in an appointment that states that man is an appointment for men to die. An appointment for man to die. Hallelujah. And when we look at that appointment, we look at Hebrews 9 and 27. And he said, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Praise the Lord. So we speak about God's appointment. And that is, that's a third appointment of God. Job 14 and 12 says, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower, and he is soon cut down. Just look at it. We know that man will die. We see it, and we hear about it every day. We had a will in this pandemic that's going on now. So many have died. And no doubt did not know that they would leave this life in the pandemic. And so we don't know what tomorrow will bring for us. In James 4 and 14, he said, Wherefore you know not what shall be on tomorrow. Hallelujah. So whatever we say or do or talk about it, we say, if the Lord's will, James has said, we ought to just mention the that statement, hallelujah, if it's the Lord's will. For what is your life, he says? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time, and then it vanished away. We don't know when our appointment for death is going to come. It may be an accident. We don't know. It may be just a normal death, as some would call it. Or it can be, no doubt, a thousand of other ways. But one thing we must be, 
We must be ready when the Lord come. Man may turn away that first or that second appointment, but not this one. Not the last two or the last one. It will not, hallelujah, it will not, it's going to occur. And man, this appointment of death, and when we talk about the last appointment, all must die. The rich man with his purple and with all of his riches died. And in hell, the Bible said, he lifted up his eyes. Not only that, praise the Lord, but the, the rich man with his bonds. When he tore to down his large, the small bonds and built larger bonds, he died also. We even find that the poor man Lazarus, Lazarus, he was poor and he was despised. He died also. So death, death come to all alike. All alike. All must die. All races. All creed. All colors. But we can, we can be ready. We can be ready for it. Paul said, he said, I'm now ready to be offered up. The time of my departure is at hand. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not only to me, but unto all of them that love his appearing. It's going to happen. Therefore, praise the Lord, if we're ready. I said, if we are ready, and we can be ready, and must be ready to receive a crown of glory. Here, he has appointed a day of judgment. He has appointed a day of judgment. We look at the Old Testament saints. Those that please God then, they will be in this. They will be ready. Praise the Lord. For the Lord, when he raptured the church, those that died will also go up in that rapture. So when the rapture take place, and after the rapture, when the seven years of tribulation take place, when all kinds of things will happen then, when God will be pouring out his wrath upon this world, when men and women, you see, all saved people will have gone to glory. But therefore, God still so loved us that people still have an opportunity to come to him. But the church will have been gone. No church is left here. You find out that uh, during this period of time, when his wrath is poured out, when you have the seven seals open, when we have the seven trumpets blown, the wrath of God, when we have uh, the seven vows, the last uh, vows, uh, or the last portion, portion of the wrath of God, when it's poured out upon this earth, it's going to be a terrible thing. So we therefore, we want to be and go up in the rapture and not left behind. But God still, even at one point, angels will be flying, an angel flying through this earth atmosphere, preaching the gospel, 
preaching the gospel, and men, many will still turn their ear away from it. You will find out that during this time, the first of the Jews will be saved. They will have an, uh, heard the word somewhere. Maybe some of them heard the angels speaking. And there are others. And out of the 12 tribes, hallelujah, you will have 12,000 being saved out of each tribe. You hear about the 144,000? Well, they're all Jews. 144,000, 12,000 of each tribe will be saved. They accept the Lord. They will become ones that will have to send the word and take the word to various people. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. And they even during this time, Men will still hate the Jews so they will still torment them and kill them. Hallelujah. And do everything to wipe, try to wipe them out of the face of the earth. Hallelujah. And when I am uh, coming toward the end of that seven years of tribulation, and I've repeated this a number of times, but I just feel that it's so important. Hallelujah. Because when it looked like there was no hope for the Jews, for Israel, God's chosen people, but they are not, have not given their lives to the Lord yet as a nation. But you see, God goes back to the promise that he made to Abraham. If you would walk out, leave your father's house, leave your land, and go to a place that I'm going to show you that I'm going to bless you. Then he said, I'm going to bless your seed. Your seed will be blessed. Hallelujah. And he said that nations will be blessed through you. And I tell you, when we look at all of the, the nations that, are, that Abraham is the progenitor or in the lineage of it, they're in the lineage of Abraham. But God promised to bless. And they are doing this tribulation period and when it's just about over. But it's in the last three and a half years, that's when they have Christ. In the first of the part of the tribulation period, he makes a treaty with Israel. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to protect you from others, the other armies and what have you. But just fooling him, just fooling Israel. You see, Satan gives the Antichrist power, his power to work miracles, to do various things, and, and therefore a lot of people will begin to follow him in that last period of time, in that time of the tribulation, begin to follow him. And, and not only that, but they will receive the mark of the Antichrist. And those that receive the mark can never be saved. Hallelujah. Whoever is back there and during that time receive that mark, it can't be raised. Hallelujah. It cannot be, it will not be forgiven. But there are those who will accept the Lord, both Gentiles and Jews. But the Jewish nation, which will consist of no doubt millions have not to this day and even to that time received uh, the Lord Jesus. Even there in the last uh, three and a half years, the first three and a half years the Antichrist had made that league or that covenant with Israel. But in the last three and a half years, he will turn against them. He's been against them all the time, but he will show his true colors. 
And that's when he had gone doing Israel with their help and their finances, where they fought many countries and nations and have conquered them and therefore bring back with him millions, no doubt, of soldiers when he attacked Israel, when he attacked Jerusalem and Judea and attacked in Ju Jerusalem, he will have taken half of Jerusalem. And it looked like there is no hope that they all will be destroyed. He must have had some, con uh, uh, some Israelites that really fought valiant there, fighting against the Antichrist armies. And then when it looked like all hope is gone, that's when the heavens will open up. When the Son of God will ride out on a white horse and all the saints, all the saved, those that were caught up in the rapture, the angels will come with him down to that battle which is called the Armageddon battle. Hallelujah. But even before that time, before he comes, the Antichrist will have taken over the temple, the temple that's going to be built by the Jewish people. The Jewish temple there. He will have taken over that temple. The false prophet that will be with the Antichrist have set up his image, made an image there, and declare that everybody should worship that image. But I tell you, my God, my Lord, when he bowed the clouds of glory, they're going to see him coming down. When the Bible said every eye will see him, it does not mean all of the human race is going to see them. Those in that vicinity, the vicinity of Jerusalem and uh, areas in that vicinity, those are the ones that will see him personally coming down. Now with all the technology, uh, you may have, uh, the, if you're watching television, you may have the, the news reporter that break in a special report. Something is happening in Jerusalem. I don't know whether they'll be able to get a glimpse of Jesus and this whole multitude coming down because the Bible said uh, as lightning flashes from the east to the west so shall the coming of the Lord be a quick thing. No time to do anything and it's going to happen. Praise the Lord. But that last appointment so that means that after this happens after this happens, then Jesus will take the Antichrist and the false prophet and destroy them, send them to hell alive. And then he will set up his kingdom. He will set up his kingdom. But I just want you to look at this. When we look at, the, when we look at the, what God has done through the prophets, how that he has uh, given them prophecies about this last time. From the time of Daniel, you go back and research and you will see, you see when Nebuchadnezzar had that vision, or that dream about that man that was tall stature, that had a gold head and a, the, the, a, a breast and arms made of silver, a belly and the thighs made of brass, the legs made of iron and the feet made of partly clay and iron. Those, what's on that statue, the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw, it represents the empires that went against Israel, that punished Israel. And therefore, there are eight empires that will fall before Jesus come. Some have already fallen. The first one, because they were so cruel to his people, Israel, Egypt, when they had them in slavery. And therefore, you know that uh, they went through a lot there. Many of them lost their lives there. But then, when they got to the Red Sea, when it was open, they crossed the cross. When Pharaoh and his army tried to come across, God took vengeance on them and closed the sea up. 
Then you find that Israel were in servitude and they were in slavery under the Assyrians. The Assyrians is the second empire. The Assyrian Empire was destroyed. Next, it was Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon Empire. The Babylon Empire, that's when Nebuchadnezzar, he went to Jerusalem, to Judea, tore down the walls, burned the city, tore down the houses, and burned the temple, and took the golden vessels out of the temple back to Babylon. Back to Babylon. Daniel did many works there. But to make it a little, to cut a little bit here, how was Babylon destroyed? The same night that the handwriting was on the wall and the king couldn't read it. Nebuchadnezzar had died and Belshazzar was king, his grandson. He couldn't read the writing until Daniel came in, read the writing, and he told the king, this night your kingdom is going to be taken. This night. And therefore, that's when the Medes and Persian, the Medo-Persian Empire, they came in and they destroyed the men of Babylon. Even Belshazzar the king was killed. That, that, that empire was destroyed. The Persian, uh, and, and then of course you had the Grecian Empire under Alexander the Great came and destroyed the Persians. Alexander, y'all read about him in history, no doubt, that a young man, a genius in military affairs, uh, on, just 33 years of age, destroyed, hallelujah, the Medo-Persian. And then the Roman Empire came in. The Romans, hallelujah, conquered the Gratians. And that's six empires already that have been destroyed. But as time went on, you know, when the Roman Empire was set up, Jesus came during that time. Jesus there, you read, read, read about Jesus and there in Rome in Matthew, the first uh, book of the New Testament. Hallelujah. But let me kind of conclude with this. You've got Ten more kings that are going to come up, and they're not here yet. I'm just trying to show how close we are to the time, how close we are, hallelujah, for that final event to take place. And that final event, as we said, he has appointed a day of judgment. So we only have two empires be called to be destroyed before Jesus come. And when Jesus come, and these empires will be destroyed, therefore he will set up his own empire, for that will be the time of the millennium where Satan is bound for a year. So we're looking at the last judgment. That's called the great white throne judgment. I mentioned that before. It's called the Great White Throne Judgment. And that's where the judgment would be for all sinners. All sinners, those that have, did not give their lives to the Lord. And Daniel said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. For he said, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil, the books will be open. Yes. Hallelujah. No excuse. In this last judgment, there will be nothing but sinners. Many judgments that will have taken place before this one, but this is the final judgment. Hallelujah. Nothing but sinners in that judgment. So humanity is in trouble today because of sin. Men and women everywhere are in trouble because of rebellion and rejection of God. The Bible said that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So 
witchcraft of all of this is spreading today, it is more so than it was back a few years ago. It is spreading so witchcraft, stubbornness, idolatry. Praise the Lord. When we put anything before God, it's idolatry. And what the Lord said, or through his prophet uh, uh, Samuel, go to Saul and tell Saul, because you haven't rejected the word of God, the Lord has rejected you from being king. Hallelujah. And there's someone to take your place. So in this day and time, we're coming closer to the time when humanity, those who will not receive the Lord, will be judged. The time is near. This, what the Lord gave uh, Daniel, it has come down through the centuries. The things that he said here has taken place, most of them, were down to the, now, the last two empires that, have, that will be destroyed. The, the, the last, the, the, the seventh empire will be the ten kings. Well, the seventh will be, that is, uh, actually, they are grouped together that they call the seventh, ten kings. And something had to happen for these kings. They are all in the area where the old Roman Empire used to be. The Soviet Union used to have great influence and control of a lot of that. But at one, it looked like it was overnight that the Soviet Union collapsed. And therefore, no longer in control of this. And that's where the ten kings will come up in. We call them ten kings, but the seventh empire, they're working together. All right, I better stop here. <laughs> but I thank God for you. And then, of course, Christ, the Antichrist, will come out of one of those ten kingdoms. And he will really combine together and make the eighth kingdom, the Antichrist. And then in that battle, he and his false prophet will be killed and sent to hell. And then Christ will begin his kingdom. That, that image that Nebuchadnezzar saw, it represented the kingdoms of this world. And the last two to be destroyed, we just saw. We used to say, the saints years ago we used to sing the song about Daniel saw the stone rolling through Babylon. Daniel saw the stone when it smoked that image that Nebuchadnezzar saw, which represents all the kingdoms, all of the kingdoms of the empire that treated Israel so cruelly. That stone hit that image and broke it all to pieces. And that stone grew so. That stone was Christ. It grew so until it filled the whole earth. And that's when Christ had, would have taken over and he will be the king of the earth during the millennium period and so much more will take place. I thank God for you. I just, I don't know, I couldn't, I, I know I've talked about some things that I may have repeated again, but it, 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 it keeps coming. Praise the Lord. As I said on the last time, I, well, anyway, I thought I had a different message, but uh, I didn't. But I thank God for each of you. We ask that you would continue to tune in to these services. And we pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. And if sin is in your life, it's time to realize I need to repent.
need to give up that life of sin. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you is my prayer. After hearing the word of God, if you want to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, I invite you and I encourage you to do so at this time. Just pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe that you rose again. And Jesus, I pray that you will forgive me for my sins. And that you will cleanse me from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, you are now my brother or my sister in Christ. And we are so happy and excited that you made Jesus Christ your choice. Let us hear from you. If you made the awesome decision to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, we would love to hear from you. Use the information on your screen to contact us and we will be praying for you. If you do not have a church home, we would love to have you into our fellowship at Jerusalem Temple. Just email us your name and your number and a member of our ministerial staff will contact you with further information on how you can do so. If you would like to be a financial blessing to this ministry, keep watching for further information.